Hello and welcome to Engineering Design and Omniverse. And uh, we're live, but uh, people probably won't roll in for uh, for a few minutes. Just thought I'd start the stream five minutes early so we can get started. Let me go ahead and share what I'm working on. Let's see here. There we go. Here I have SolidWorks open. And uh, let's take a step back here. So last week we finished this. We can now simulate this crank slider. Yeah. And if we run this, there we go. We're getting accelerations, we're getting angles, we're getting forces, we're getting everything we need to figure out loads onto this uh, onto this crank. And uh, we've got people rolling in. How's it going, Simply Genable? It's good to see you. And uh, let's see. <clears throat> yeah. So we've got all of the accelerations and angles and forces we need to from this simulation to figure out what we might want. So let's, oops, I'm going to pause it. So now if we look we're going to look for kind of some critical points here, right? <clears throat> Run this for just a minute and then I stop it. For example, I'm noticing that right here at this timestamp, I'm getting um, really a high angle. Actually, I probably want to be looking at, so this is our transmission force. Here we go. So right here, we're getting a really high transmission force. Negative to positive. Oh, look at that. And this is really a, really a very negative, from negative five or so, times 10 to the negative minus five, all the way up to 1.1 times, oh, one times 10 to the six. So that's a pretty high load. And so what I think we'll do is we got this lens repeated twice on both of these ends. So I think what we'll do is we'll kind of look. What we're gonna we're gonna take and we're gonna find just some sample large loads, maybe three of them, at this minimum, at this minimum, and at this maximum force. And we'll figure out three load cases from those from that data. Okay. Then what we're doing is I've got a SolidWorks open. And we're going to make a new design space, like a new design for this crank that gives it a bit more flexibility for the structural topology optimization to carve it out, carve out what it wants. So, and then we're going to bring open that up in um, Cognicad and design it. Yeah. So let's get to work on that. I think let's start with this design. Oh, do I got two? What's going on here? Oh, that's just a reflection on the ground plane. That's uh, throwing me off. So if I, interesting. All right. So let's insert a new component, a new part into our assembly. And um, yeah, that looks good. And its origin should be right there. Great. And then go to scale. Oh, we've got to finish this. Sorry, I keep getting this. I don't want to update right now. That's okay. All right. So we now got this new part in here and active. If we go to a sketch, um, we're going to want to grab, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to want to create a boss around this pin and a boss around this pin. Come on, right view, top view, there we go. 
So we're going to want to create these bosses around this, and we're going to tell the structural topology optimization that it has to keep um, keep those spots. But then we're going to design a bigger crank around that to give it more flexibility in the final design because it'll want to use, you know, when it's trying to support these loads coming into this, it's going to want to arc out and support the, kind of support that load path efficiently. You'll we'll see. But let's and in the way the way we do this in um, in uh, excuse me in for Cognicat in particular is they're going to want one part with the, all of the like the kind of solid bodies that we want. And then, oh, Edmar's here, rolling in. Do you want me to add you to the scene, Edmar? Or maybe he's not quite ready yet. I'll add him to the stream here. I hope he's ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to say hi. Wish you a great stream today. I only have a few minutes, but I thought I'd jump in really quick oh, uh, just thanks. to let everybody know that Jensen will be speaking at an amazing keynote in just a few weeks uh, at Computex. Um, let me see. I think I have a slide. Thank, thank goodness yeah. for Greer. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, it's on a Sunday night. Uh, so it is actually going to be very easy for people to make if they want to. Um, it's at 8 PM Pacific. Um, and I'll post a link in both chats in just a second. Uh, but it's there at the bottom of the screen. Um, we have a bunch of people at NVIDIA right now working on, this presentation so i think it's going to blow people away so uh it should be it's anytime jensen is involved in a keynote himself uh we you know we, we we go all in so it should be a lot of fun um the other thing that we have we just announced this, uh yesterday uh or actually on when yeah yesterday wednesday uh set the scene challenge so this is our latest community challenge uh mm -hmm. so anyone who's watching if you have any kind of landscape or environment render uh, uh, from the past uh, that you've utilized Omniverse in some way, shape, or form. You could use whatever rendering system you like. You don't have to use Omniverse as a renderer. Uh, just we'd love to see uh, different parts of your workflow using different apps. Uh, and if Omniverse is part of that, that's awesome. Um, so you just basically, uh, you can check out the forum post. I'll also post a link to that in the chat in a second. And that kind of gives you the more breakdown of kind of how you post it on social media. And, and obviously the tags on the screen are pretty easy to remember. Uh, we we are blown away every time we announce these community challenges or contests and we see what the community has provided. What we're looking at right now is from Tanya Langner, who uh, some of you of our uh, um, avid live livestream watchers might remember. She's been on a live stream. She's a blender um, artist, really fantastic. Um, this is something that she worked on with ZBrush and Adobe Substance Painter. Um, and rendered with uh, with USD Composer, or formerly known as Create. So that those are the two big things I wanted to announce. Um, on the Discord server, we, we have the Computex event, uh, and we have details on the set of scene also, so you can go to the Community Challenges channel. Um, and then just a few minutes ago, for anyone who's been blown away by what we've been showing off uh, leveraging Deep Search, uh, we just started a Deep Search channel on Discord server. So if you want to find out mm -hmm. about more about Deep Search and how to leverage that, um, Eric actually knows a lot about it <laughs> and uh, can always answer questions too. But um, but those are the quick things I wanted to share, buddy, at, um, for all your all your great viewers of the stream. Thanks, Edmar. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's, oh. what, so what are you covering today? So today, let me show you. So last time we made this cool extension that lets us get grab forces and data out of this extension. And today what we're going to do is let me actually if, our goal is to come up with like something like this. Let me see if I can come up with a cool image. Yeah, I can. So these are bell cranks on Formula SAE cars, but they're similar designs. So we're going to try to come up with a really efficient design, something like something like this. So it's like Ooh. topology optimization will come up with these really cool looking designs for us, you know? Very cool. Yeah, and these are all for these are all on car suspensions. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me. I don't know if you caught the Predator live stream, uh, but we had a live stream with uh, one of the the founders of Predator Cycling. 
And uh, it I was really blown away with the rest of the audience, uh, how he was leveraging uh, the platform and USD to be able to bring in all these tools to help design the many different parts that go into uh, um, a bicycle, believe it or not, like thousands of parts. Um, yeah, and it actually, so it, some of this, uh, some of these models look very similar to some of the parts that they actually do. And uh, I think he, um, uh, they also do the, uh, the manufacturing in house. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So I'll link that live stream. People are interested, but yeah, this is cool, man. And let me see if I got a good picture from Cognicad. Yeah, here we go. So Cognicad 3D is a software. Here's a good here's a good screenshot. It takes this big design space and the loads that you supply and it will carve out this really like cool organic lightweight structure out of it. Very cool. It is a very efficient structure. So it yeah, actually it optimizes for um, the most fit, um, structural efficient. It looks and, super futuristic, actually. Yeah, yeah. If you watch movies and you'll see kind of artists' conceptual generative design in, in in a lot of these science fiction um, movies, it's pretty cool stuff. And then, oh, great question from Nandu. Um, I do not have the code on GitHub yet. I've got to go through a process and make sure I'm all above board with sharing that. And I think what I'd like to do is get a repository going. And then after every, uh, after every live stream, go ahead and update the repository when we're, as we're working on a project so people can follow along. Um, but yeah, so that's, that we're trying to get from these loads in Omniverse from the, that we got from a simulation to we've got a cool design like this in our scene for that crank. And so to, to start that, we've got to um, actually. I'm gonna, gonna go, I'll go ahead and pull up Cognicad really quick. And uh, let's let's go ahead and create our project. Or I think we already created one. Did we? No. So we'll create a new project. Isotropic structural analysis. Okay. So the first step is we're gonna need to upload a single step file. And we're going to need non-design volume inside the design domain. So we need the design domain and to see how they overlap in this image on the right. So we're going to need to basically, um, we'll cut right here. I have brought in the original crank. And let's go ahead and um, we're going to design. the So the non-design domain are the spaces we need to, to keep no matter what. And the design domain is this flexible space where, hey, you can keep that material or not. So let's start with there. Let's create a new sketch on this plane. Well, actually, it's just a exit sketch. What did I do here? Sketch on this plane. Here we go. Let's see if it detects this. No, we're going to need a don't use SOLIDWORKS a ton, but there's going to be some kind of a... What we want to do... Yeah, well, actually, we'll do this. We're going to offset this. And we'll do like 5 mil because... Oh, let's do 4 mil. We're just, I'm just making this up. This isn't really... If, I was, if we were actually at an engineering company and we knew the loads on this pin, we would calculate the minimum thickness you need it around that pin, right? For it to withstand the bearing loads. But we're just uh, goofing around a little bit. All right, great. So there's one, let's do that again um, with an offset of zero. And yeah, cool. So now we can finish this sketch. And here we have it. And let's go to features, extrude. Perfect. Uh, let's reverse that. Is there just a flip? There we go. Looks like it's less than 10. Let's see if it's eight. I'm gonna guess it's a, oh. <laughs> I 
There you go. Seven and a half millimeters. I'm guessing close enough for what we're doing here. Cool. So that's going to be our first keep out. Okay. And let's go into the same thing around the other pin. <clears throat> Create a sketch on this plane. We'll do those two those offset entities again. Uh, first one zero and do it again. And uh, well, let's do it like, oh, four is too big. Let's do it like two mil for this one. So Z is asking, what is a keep out? And I don't know that actually either. Oh yeah. Well, basically what, what we're gonna say is for the design, let me show you, I'll show you an example. Well, it's also called the non-design volume. And if we go, if I go back here, and if I, here you go, edit this shock tower, I'll show you what we're gonna get. So this is what we're gonna have in the end. Is these green spaces, I'm saying, you've gotta keep that material at the end of the design. Those are the non-design spaces. In this blue space, I'm saying you you can have or not have any of that material. And the result's going to be something like this. Just give it a second. <clears throat> these are the results of I'm an optimization run. Learned so much on these streams. There you go. Yeah, this is what it ends up looking like. So you can see that it's kept those cylinders. I, that I said it had to keep. But then where that blue space is, it picked the most important material out of that space. Yeah, so it's, uh, Zia says it's equivalent to a constraint. And yeah, it's a constraint of sorts, right? We're, you're constraining that it must keep that material, which is important, by the way, because if you have a bolt going through here, and if you have like a big old gap <laughs> around, around the side in the end of the design, that wouldn't work very well. You know, in this case, this is a suspension shock tower. And so you'd have these long pins through here and you want those pins to be very well supported. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Let's go back to SolidWorks and let's finish this one. Let's go to, oh, actually exit the sketch. And then let's make another extrude. Let's flip that direction. Oh yeah, that looks perfect. So these are gonna be, this, here are the mirror material around those pins that we're gonna say, you've gotta keep that material no matter what. Now, what we get to do is we get to design the space um, around this. Now, there's two ways we can go. We can just use this space as is and say, we're just gonna take that existing crank and make it lighter. Oh, and I'm curious for some feedback here. Or we can design a new one that bows out a little bit more, that gives us different packaging, but gives us maybe a little bit more efficient design. And so I'm curious what you all think. Um, should we do the make a new bigger design space, or should we stick with what we've got here? And very cool. Well, I have to go. I have another meeting I have to head okay. to. So I wanted to just uh, say hi and uh, thanks for letting me give this quick little announcements. Um, yeah, maybe I'll try to check in with you a little later in the stream. Yeah, I hope you'll come back and thanks for joining us. And yeah, it's an exciting session. We're finally going to get to use I, it's all awesome. that work that we've been doing. Very cool to see this coming together. All right, talk to you guys soon. Yeah, later. All right. Well, I've got conflicting votes between the existing and the bigger. Oh, here we go. Great question. Is there, are there advantages and or disadvantages if we pick one or the other? I think that if we pick the existing, we'll know we're making it lighter from the existing baseline and we'll know that the packaging is the same. So for example, if there are other things in our assembly, we know it's not gonna impact or have collisions with other stuff. If we let this bow out a little bit, then um, in theory, we should be able to come up with a lighter design you got to watch out, though, uh, Some with these designs in particular. Yeah. Sometimes that can give you these really thin, spindly members that in reality would buckle and not be the greatest. 
I'd say let's make it a bit bigger though. I think that's going to be more fun. So let's make another sketch. Oh, just a second here. Okay, we're good. Let's create another sketch on this plane. And we're just stealing geometry from that previous one, right? And let's say, let's just create, oh, perfect. Make it a zero offset. We got that curve. I like these, en these edges are kind of nice, you know? We got that curve. Oh, great question. Can we use this 3D design approach for 3D printing? Absolutely. In fact, that's one of the best ways to manufacture some of these designs, especially, well, you can put whatever design constraints you want on these things, but um, I think that 3D printing design constraints or manufacturing constraints are some of the easiest to meet because if we're going to cast it or if we're going to um, do a 3-axis th CNC mill of it, then you have to leave, you know, it has to be completely open to the ends that you're machining from. Whereas with 3D printing, you can have a lot more voids on the inside of the design. And in fact, um, Carbon 3D, who owns Cognicad, this company, they specialize in 3D printing. So, and Cognicad, the Parametters Group, they have a lot of really cool tools, all built around 3D printing. Uh, another interesting question. Can we use a program like Blender instead of SolidWorks to get us part of the way there? I don't know. Well, let me think. As long as you can export a step file with multiple bodies inside of it, so multiple solids inside of it, then yes. That's that's really the requirement. Um, a step file is a pretty, it's like you're one of your neutral CAD file formats. And that is the requirement for CogniCAD and other ones might will use other CAD formats. So I bet you could use Blender uh, as, long, as, as long as it can export a step and as long as it can export like an STL, there's probably a way to get there, but I don't know. I, you know, a good one, if you just want to get started and you don't want to pay for um, CAD licenses, uh, I think the most friendly CAD software is there. Fusion 360, Autodesk Fusion 360 has a friendly uh, free tier for startups. So if you're a startup, you can get a free tier of their Fusion 360 product. And it actually has built-in generative design and topology optimization um, that you can use as well. Although I think you need to use cloud credits. I forget if you can use that for free or not. And then um, another good one, uh, Onshape is a web-based CAD software that has a free tier as long as you're willing to, um, as long as you're willing to share your parts publicly. And yep. So those are your two, as far as CAD goes, those are your two free tiered kind of commercial CAD softwares. And um, oh, I didn't know that. Um, I have not used uh, Moi before. I'll, sh I'll check that out. Yeah. Oh, so Moy, we're not sure if they have a free tier or not. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, so I've never used, good to know. I've never checked that one out. I've never seen that one before, but I'd be curious one, one of these times. All right. As far as, so now we're going to connect this curve to that curve. We're just going to let it bow out. And we could just create an arc that's tangent to both. Let's see how that looks. Um... Let's see if we can do like an endpoint arc. Oh, tangent arc. Oh, oh, it wants the endpoint. No thanks. Three point arc. All right, we want the. Um, that's looking good. Sure. Let's start there. Let's do another one of these. Great. And let's find our sketch constraints. Um, where are the sketch constraints? Sometimes if you, ah, here we go, tangent. 
cool. So that made him tangent now. Let's do the same here on this side. Tangent. Cool. Tangent. It's just moving those endpoints to make it nice and it's going to be like a little bubble by the end. And then last one here of those constraints, tangent. Great. Now uh, we're going to trim stuff. Nope. Let's try that again. Nope. Please try. I'm new to the trim tool here. There we go. So if I, I, I select what I want to trim off and I select what I want to trim it off by, there we go. That's looking good. And uh, let's do that again for this side. I want to cut this off by this element and cut this off by this element. Cool. Nice. So now we have a face here. And let's go ahead and extrude. Uh, we're done with our sketch, and then we can extrude that seven and a half mil. And um, then we're done with the CAD. So reverse that. Just a second. Do I have three bodies? Let me make sure I do that right. Configure feature. No. Oh, edit feature. Let's just make sure. We just want to make sure it's not. We can usually pick the operation. Um, blind seven. Ah, do not merge the result. That's important. And let's actually look at this one and make sure it's also it's not merging as well. It's not merging. Very good. And that's important because. When we export this part, when we bring it into um, Cognicad, it's got to be um, three different bodies within the same part. So we've got this boss, this boss, and this boss, and they're not merged together on purpose. Uh, what kind of material are we aiming for? You know, let's do like, let's do some pl plastic material, and then I can share this CAD model, and you guys, you all can 3D print it at home. Would that be kind of cool? I mean, I could go with aluminum. We can go with a titanium or unobtainium or whatever we want. But uh, I think it'd be kind of fun if you could 3D print this at home, right? Yeah, let's do that. Unless someone really wants to add an aluminum or something fancy, Inconel, so it can withstand high temperatures, <laughs> uh, carbon composite. Yeah, 3D printable. I like it. Uh, so now what we're going to do is going to isolate. Actually, we don't want to isolate. We want to um, open it by itself. Here we go. So here's our part. So we want to file, export, um, or maybe just save as in SolidWorks. Yeah, that's fine. And we want a step file. Um, either should be fine. And let's call it um, design space. Cool. Great. Uh, let's check this out. Um, let's try to import it now. Let's create a project, isotropic, choose a file. And um, CAD design space dot step upload. All right. Import started. Your model will appear in the list as soon as it's finished importing. Oh, okay. It's thinking about it. While it's thinking about that, I've got my 
Oh, by the way, um, please excuse Jen. We have got a super top secret skunk work projects that we are working on together. And she's got some tasks she's got to work on this morning. So, and we should, I think we'll be able to show you all what we've been working on soon. And it's, I can't wait. It's so cool. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's awesome. But, oh, import failed. Shoot. Look at this. Let's try the export again, but let's try it. There were two step specifications. Let's try the other specification and see what we can do here. I sure hope it works. We used AP214. Let's use this older one. Let's overwrite it. And we'll try again. Create new project, ISO. Please work. Your model will appear in the list as soon as it's finished importing. What? Well, shoot. Okay. It's a bummer. All right, let's try this. Uh, file, save as. Let's just save it as a SolidWorks part. And then I'm going to open up in NX. All right. Oh, Skunk Works is a funny name. Do you all know the history behind Skunk Works? Uh, if you don't, we got to have a little moment here. Um, the Skunk Works, the original, yeah, they're the they're the group. I think it's a is it Lockheed Martin? that originally designed some really cool aircraft such as the SR-71. So, yeah, that's where the term comes from. But it's a term for like a small group in a company doing something kind of cool. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. So now we have that saved. Let's pop open NX. And see, something was wrong with the... Uh, Something was wrong with those bodies, or I don't know what. But we'll see if um, we'll see if it likes a, a step file from NX a little bit better. All right. I'll try this one. We'll try a few. <clears throat> oh dear. It failed to load from here too. Oh. Huh. We're struggling. Let's try uh, just opening that step file. Oh, all files. See what it looks like. Yeah, three bodies. Yeah, it looks good. File. Let's try exporting step from here. Oh, I can. This would support different. Oh, I don't have the license for that. That's fine. We'll try AP two fourteen. 
Oh, or we want to. Yeah. CAD. Hopefully we can get this working. Try this again. Create a project, isotropic, choose a file. Here's the NX step file. Upload. Please work. Oh, come on. Well, of course, we can't have everything work right, can we? Let me think about this. Well, I'll reach out to the people. Um, I'll, I'll reach out to them during the week. Oh, try file I know works. Yeah, I just don't know where these ones are. It's been so long since I've worked on them. Let me see if I can find them real quick. That's a great idea. <clears throat> um, let's see. 3D print assets. Yeah. What would I have called that? Like design domain? I'm just looking in my folder here. Let's see, actually. If I edit this, does it say the name of the file? No. Oh, oh, I think maybe that's the problem. I think maybe I had it backwards. Let's try this. Maybe you import them. Maybe they're not, can't be together in one part. Maybe I had that backwards. Because I'm seeing that you can import more than one part. So let's... um. So what we'll do here is let's just start with this and we'll file. Is that only making it visible or is that actually suppressing it? So I want to suppress it. There we go. Let's see if we can just import the single body. So let's export a step. And design space NX. Yes. All right. So we're just going to, we've just got the one solid now. Let's check that out. Uh, return to cabinet. You can delete. Yep. Great project, isotropic. Upload. Let's see if it works. Hopefully it works. Come on, come on, you can do it. Oh, what? Yeah, I'm going to have to talk to them, figure out what's going on. I, usually it's something, I'm just doing something wrong, but because obviously I've done it before. Import failed. Oh, here we go. Please import an assembly of several parts. The parts represent design domain, non-design areas, boundary conditions, etc. Well, that's giving me the same error for all of those. Hmm. I wonder. Oh, it's maybe it's expecting an assembly, not a part. Oh, I see. Okay. Maybe let's try that. Actually, gave me a pretty decent error there. We're going to say uh, let's go to SolidWorks.
exit isolate. Can I disable this? Well, I'll just delete it at the end. Let's go uh, back to the edit assembly. Insert components. Well, actually, uh, we want to new part. I'm yeah, I'm in a meeting right now, hun. So all right. Where's select the facial plane which position in part? There we go. And then let's see if we can do this. Oh, I see. Oh, sketch, exit sketch. I'm just going to take this and see if I can drag it in. Um, it's not letting me. Maybe I need to be in assembly edit mode here. No. No. Nope. Well, let's just redo it real quick. These ones were easier. Yeah, delete those. Yep. Okay, let's insert another part. All right. And then we'll do this offset entities thing. We're going to go, yep, zero mil and then four mil. Cool. And let's... Uh, Edit this part now. We'll do the other other side. Oh shoot, I messed up. I gotta edit this part. I've gotta go ahead and extrude that. Let's try this again. There we go. And all right. Sketch it. Offset curve, two mil. Check. Offset curve. Zero mil, check. Uh, exit the sketch. Now we're gonna make an extrusion off of that sketch. Flip it, check. Alrighty. So now we can come here to add the assembly. Now we got all three bodies. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this original out of it. And here we go. Delete the following item and all dependent items. Um, advanced. So we're going to look at this dialog real quick. Let's just try it. Well, actually, before we do that, let's save it. File, save all. Yeah, fine. That's fine. Okay. So now that it's saved, if I messed it up, where am I saving it to? I wonder. Yeah, I'm saving it to that same folder. So, 
So we can say file. So now it's saved. Let's go ahead and uh, delete this one and see what it breaks. Make it. Yep. Okay, it's got some build errors. It doesn't like, but the parts are still there. So I, I think that's worth it. That's worth a shot. That's actually. Um, So we're just going to try file. Okay, file, um, save as. Oh, no, I got to export a step. No. No, I do it right here. All right. Saving it now, saving the assembly as a step, and Hopefully that uh, is hopefully that works. All right, delete this one. Create a project isotropic. All right, let's. I need everyone to cross your fingers for me. And upload. Oh, here we go. Come on, let's do this. Cross those fingers. Come on. You can do it. Please. Yes. It worked. All right. It worked. There it is. Cool. Let's, uh, yeah. I love it. Okay, next we add a material. Well, materials library, library is, let's just do ABS plastic. Um, yeah. Oh, coefficient of thermal conductivity. Don't care. Reference temperature. Um, well, what units, I wonder. We'll just, I don't, we're not, I don't think we're worried about temperature. Okay, next. At least one design space. Boom. That's the design domain. Okay. Non-design features. That and that. So those are the things. Oh, you know what? We gotta edit this a little bit. I need to punch holes in that in that thing. So let's uh I screwed that up. Let's see here. Where are we? This is SolidWorks. Where am I? Here we go. Oh, I don't want this one. Do I have two SolidWorks is open? I want the solid assembly. There we go. Let's see if it will let us. Um, see how there's like that solid even where that pinhole is? That's going to be all messed up. That's going to be all messed up. So we want to go to this design domain and make edit that. That's fine. And we're going to create a sketch. And we're going to do that offset entities thing again. Can I like hide this? No, so I'm going to go ahead and file open this one, reopen it before I broke it. Don't tell me I did that wrong. <sighs> There's always something else, right? Oh, don't save. Close this. Don't save. Open. This assembly. 
There we go. Whew, good thing I saved it. It's almost like I've done wild stuff like this before, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's go to design domain, and we want to uh, cut out those pinholes <laughs> real quick. Let's go to sketch, and then we're going to make a sketch on this plane. We're going to offset. Let's actually exit the sketch. And... Actually, uh, what? I want to select that curve. See that? Maybe. Oh, let's see. Let's see here. Hmm, I'm struggling here because it's not letting me select those curves. But let's let's work it. Let's just try it again. See if I can highlight it. We want to offset. No. Come on, let me do it before you know. But it's a visibility thing, I think. So let me see if I can make this change transparency of this. Let's exit the sketch. I've just never used this part before. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta select this curve, right? <clears throat> How's that on the surface? What am I doing here? Sorry, this is oh here now it's let me do it. I'll, I'll take it. All right. Back in business. I'm not sure what changed. That's the problem with not being uh, I'm relatively new to SolidWorks, as I mentioned before. So please be kind. Okay, now we're going to go to um, Features. And we want to extrude cut. It's going the right direction. Now we go. Now we're talking. So now we have that cut out like it's supposed to be. And so now we can go back to the assembly. <clears throat> and I'm just really curious. Actually, I bet if we just, we can just leave that in there. Let's just suppress it or hide it. That works for me. And let's go ahead and file. Uh, save as actually first of all let's just save it first because I like the state we're in save all and then we're going to save a copy as a step AP214 is fine I'm overriding it uh, no cool yeah, cross those fingers again, folks. But we got to go back to our cabinet. We'll leave that one in there for now, but we'll create a new project, isotropic. Select our file. Upload. And go to our models. All right, everyone cross your fingers again. That's... <laughs> And it worked. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's that's more like it. It's got holes where they're supposed to be holes now. That's that's good. That's good. So add material. We're gonna select uh, ABS. Add just uh, 
non-zero numbers for the temperature stuff that we don't really care about. Next. Okay, there's our design space. Next. Non-design features. Next. All right. Define known load cases. Next. Fi oh. Add a load case. Uh, just a second. Oh, we want a generative design. Yeah. Add a load case. Load type. And let's see the name. Very creative name. Load one. Static load. Next. All right. So we are going to fix it by this big pin, aren't we? And we're going to go ahead and fix it in all three directions. Cool. We actually go. Oh, there we go. We're just going to do those faces. See that? That's better. So this, this, these faces are going to be constrained. And next, loads represent forces, pressures, that sort of thing. We're going to apply loads here. Um, there we go. Sure, we'll apply loads to the center. It's a force, and here we go. And we're just going to apply. Let's take a look at our. Let's take a look at Omniverse. This is where we get to actually use this stuff, right? So let's look at this peak. It's at point two twenty five. It's one, one, zero, seven, one, two, three. So I've got my little notepad here. And the force at point um, two, two, let's say two, two, four, close enough, is one million, one point one million somethings. And with topology, we're not doing stress constraints, so we really just need magnitudes. But we're looking at point 224, which is um, the angle is 2.9 radians. Uh, well, let's just say 3 radians. Cool. Which is just... Honestly, it's close enough to 90 degrees. I'm probably not going to worry about it <laughs> because it's almost 90 degrees. So we can figure out the exact uh, components and whatever. But I think we want to go in the Z direction. And we'll say it's negative 1. It's a Newton's. And I think newtons are relative to meters, and we're in centimeters. So I'm going to guess it's just going to be like, I mean, it's not going to be a huge load. So I, it's just not making sense, right? Like how many pounds would that little thing have? Just for, so let's use our logic here, right? Um, like it's four, pound, four newtons per pound, right? Newtons, two pounds. Um, yeah, one newton is 0 0.2 pounds. So like, I'm just gonna guess it's gonna be like 110 newtons based on what we're seeing. And look, if we were doing if we were doing an actual design, we'd figure that out, right? And we told we absolutely can could figure it out. We can look at our units of mass. We'd figure out the the um, the actual units. That's definitely doable. I'm just trying to move a little fast here. I think um, 110 newtons seems pretty reasonable. And so let's save that. <clears throat> There we go. So we've got one load case now. Let's add another. Oh, wait. Let's go back to load cases. 
highlight. Oh, just a second. Oh, here we go. Load cases. Unhighlight. Load cases. Define now load cases. Generate design. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's not letting us edit load cases now. Oh, add low case. Here we go. Static low case two, next. Do you want to copy boundary conditions data from the previous low case? Yeah, we totally do. All right. So now we're adding another, a second low case. Let's look at this thing. Uh, where are you, Omniverse? Okay. So we kind of did this high load, right? Now let's do this really low load. It's about half. So it's going to be 50 newtons. And I'm going to think we want... Well, that's going to be angle of... This is when they're completely aligned. So I don't think that's going to be a very interesting load case. 210... 210. Yeah, it's about 45 degrees, 550 newtons, right? So let's go ahead and we're just back of the envelope in this, right? So let's um, let's go back to Cognicad and let's do so 50 newtons times 0.707 for 45 degrees, and it's going to be in the opposite direction from before. Um, and it's going to be pointing inward towards the pin. So 50 times 0 0.707 is so 35 newtons ish. And we don't care about the y, so we're going to say 35 new, oh, negative 35 newtons. We want to go in towards the pin and up. Is that right? How's that look? Yeah. Cool. So these are just, um, to, you know, some rough load cases. And we've got two, yep, great. So now, we want, do we want to maximize the design stiffness to specified fraction of the material or minimize of mass def deformation? Let's, let's do a de generative design exploration both loads. Okay, and we want to do like what percentage? We want to well, they'll both end up being stiff. They're, they're pretty similar in the end. Let's do like a 5% volume fraction. Oh, they want like a, less than 12, huh? No, we're just going to do 5. Well, let's do 12. Okay. I'm going to listen to Zia. Oh, but we need stress constraints and stuff there. I don't really, we don't really have those and I don't feel like coming up with them. Let's just go the minimum they'll let us, 12%. Okay. Res resolution quality is low. Speed is fast. Um, minimum feature size. Yeah, let's say one millimeter. Or I'll, I'll do auto, that's fine. A symmetry plane. Yeah, we definitely want one of those. Um, not that one. Yeah. So it'll be symmetrical about that plane. Added manufacturing. Sure. 45 degree overhang angle. Why not? Okay. And now it's running. It's queued. Uh, yeah. So... That's actually one really cool thing about uh, the Cognicad solver is that you can have pretty good stress constraints. Not all topology optimization solvers give you stress constraints. And uh, how long does it take? Uh, you know, I don't. I haven't usually just waited around. 
for it. I usually just come back in an hour or two and it's done. And it depends. Like I chose a low quality. And so you can choose different qualities and it'll take, that really depends. It really depends a lot on the quality you pick and, um, and that sort of thing. So how would we input a stress constraint typically? That's, it's actually not that hard. We just would look up the stress, the max, the stress we would want for ABS. So for example, um, ABS is going to have a yield stress value that we could look up. We could look up like um, ABS, oh, ABS plastic yield stress. Yeah, strength is fine. <clears throat> and you're going to get a couple. Strength at yield is 29 megapascals or MPAs. And well, it's 20 to 48, which is a pretty big range. But also remember, if you hit the actual yield stress, two bad things are going to happen. One is it's actually going to start to bend, like <laughs> pretty bad, like permanently bend. And two is if you get close to yield stress, it's going to fatigue. And so what you usually do is just bump that down by 20%. So I, I just pick like 20 MPOS for a yield stress as a, just a rough one. But if you worked at an engineering company, you would have tables you would use and, and knock down factors and stuff like, you know, you start with, you know, okay, the material we buy from this supplier, we've actually tested it. It has this yield strength. And then in this application, it's going to get a little hot. So we're going to bump that down by 20%. Oh, and it's going to, we really don't want fatigue. So we're going to bump it down by another 20%. Oh, and we want to make sure even if it gets hit by rocks and stuff and chipped that it's still going to hold. So we're going to bump it down another 20%. And so your uh, stress constraint ends up being, um, being like, quite a bit lower than the actual yield strength of the material typically. Um, but we are, it's rolling. So I think next week we'll take a look at the results and uh, we'll import the, uh, we'll take a look at the results. We'll import them into Omniverse. And really we're going to wrap up this cr crank slider project hopefully next week. And, um, Oh, I wouldn't say one-tenth, maybe like half of the yield strength. Zia says maybe a tenth of the yield strength. No, I'd say maybe like, I mean, it depends, but maybe like half to three-quarter by the end. And it really depends like what you're working with. Like if you're working with a carbon composite, there's tons of knockdown factors like on aircraft because it could get struck by lightning or hit by a bird or all kinds of stuff. But uh, anyway... Another fun day on engineering design in Omniverse. Thank you all for joining. And we actually finished. Oh, look at that. It's optimizing. It's at 0%. So next week, that'll be at 100%. And I might run a couple and get the volume fraction to a really good, you know, get it until we get a really good design. And I'll share kind of uh, the volume fraction is like if we start off with 100% of the material, the volume fraction is the percentage that we're going to end up with at the end, right? So, oh, this is going pretty quick. So until next week, yeah, a bit of a cliffhanger, but we'll do that. We'll show that off next week. And like we've talked about, we're going to go back to the remote control car. We're going to start designing a remote control car that we can design in Omniverse. We're going to use this, modify this extension to gather loads on an actual remote control car if we want. Or I think what would be really cool would be to add a Jetson Nano to that thing and with some sensors and see if we can figure out how to get us our own self-driving remote control car that any of you can 3D print and drive at home. So I, I think that'd be so cool. Let's work on that next. That'll be a fun project. So until next week, um, have a good one. <laughs>